Hang on. Didn't ask me anything. There's just a little red flashing light saying it's recording. Andrew Hudson, uh, lead guitar for Desecrator. Muggsy is how I'm commonly referred to. I believe a 2 a.m. pony show. This was in my early 20s when I was, um, you know, young enough to <laughs> young enough to stay up that late for the sake of thrash metal. Most of my memories are pretty blurry from back then because I was young and partying quite hard. And like, if I was going to a desecrated show, I would just get on it. And um, I was blind drunk. And by the time I actually got to the pony at 2 a.m. for the, the thrash metal show that Desecrated were putting on, I sobered up enough throughout the duration of the show that when they did an encore of Little Jimmy Black, I got up on stage and did the screaming bit that Mano used to do, because I love that bit for some reason. After the show, Mano was talking, he said, who was that Muggsy guy? You had said on stage, big thanks to Andrew Hudson, and Mano had heard Muggsy, and I believe it stuck. The next day it was a thanks to Andrew Muggsy Hudson. I must have bought it after a show. I would have seen you guys play, and I would have been like, I'm gonna get that record, I'm gonna get whatever record they have. And um, I was driving around in a 19, 1994 Mitsubishi Magna at the time that had just had a CD player upgraded. That CD lived in that car for a good like one to two years, and I was obsessed with it when it came out. Um, and because I'm a guitarist guitarist, I was just obsessed with the guitar work. Like the riffs on that album were insane. I could never decipher it. Like it was like the most upsetting thing about that album was the fact that the riffs were so razor sharp and perfectly tight, but I still couldn't tell what they were doing. If you can hear something clear, but you still don't know what's happening, you just get angry and jealous. The drum work was ridiculous. The sound of the whole thing, it was just a, a wall of angry pub noise. And it was like, it perfectly captured, you know, those shows at the art house. And it was, yeah, I played that thing to absolute death. Just a bullshit type band, and it was kind of something to aspire to. When, when other bands in the scene were gonna be that good. I couldn't, I couldn't pick your age for one. Sometimes I thought you were 25, sometimes I thought you were 40. Like, it was, you were either like vivacious and like, and just like exuberant, or you were stern. And like you had this like old man seriousness and like you had that, you had the old man aesthetic in the band, but not in a kind of, you look like geezers. You look like dudes that have been doing it for 20 years. You look like a well-established, like well, like fucking trained thing. That was the hardest thing to pick is to realize that, you know, you guys started around the same time that the other stuff did. So it was, and it was just, it was like watching what you could actually do at that level in Melbourne at those venues, if you were willing to fucking put the effort in, to actually put in, you know, put in the production, put in the effort, put in the rehearsals, and make it like, not just a gig, but a fucking show. And that was, yeah, that was something I never took on board. <laughs> There's always gonna be um, a little nostalgia twitch um, when we do play the, you know, the stuff off that, off that Live Till Death album. Even when we're in the rehearsal room, when we bounce from an old song to a new song, there's like that huge dynamic shift. And I think like it might be psychosomatic in my head, but as soon as we play that, it's like the guitar tone changes. Just, you know, the way that the songs are put together, the way that the notes are like bounce in between each other. Like even the accenting is different. Like I've got a really particular style of playing and to have like, to have to approach something that's got, got a whole new swing to it was um, you know, something that I always definitely wanted to try. Do I have a favorite song? Um, I think like, it's weird to say it, but like considering I've played it now like a thousand times, but Till Death is always gonna be like the riff fest to me. Like something about that, 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 that riff, I can't get it out of my head. Something that I've a million times tried to rip off and never successfully managed to, to imitate in a way that captures just like the frenesity and the effortlessness of the sound of it. There's a million notes going on, but it barely sounds like you're, you're sweating through it. That song's killer. It's got hooks for days and it's got like 10 different types of hooks. But you know, that's that's how I describe the whole album. Every song is um, an overly complex 
riff fest. You don't need 28 riffs in a four minute song, but why not? I have one moment that I, that I live for every single show, and um, it's a moment that I get to enjoy every single set because we've never fucked it up. Um, knock on wood. Oh, wait till the camera settles. Um, like oh, three quarters or two thirds of the way through uh, Live Till Death, when it goes to the first, like, just triplet, like, stops, it goes. Brruh, 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 brruh. <laughs> I look at Jared every single time when we <laughs> nail it and we both just share a smile. <laughs> a knowing smile that we are like bullshit good at that every single time. I think that's what I get to take away from those shows is like just like being part of like a flawless execution of a, of a passage of music. Not much can top that.